Hello everyone. Welcome to our new series of Digital Forensics. In this series, we will be talking about in-house techniques of email header analysis. Analyzing email header is a must knowledge any analyst should have who are working in SOC. We don't appreciate posting the header in any online website and get away with it. So after this course, we will be able to analyze header of your own. You will be able to curb any attachment out of the header and understand if the email is legit or not. Before we proceed, please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our practical example. And we appreciate you to give us a thumbs up if you like the content. So without doing any further delay, let's begin. Okay, so to start with, uh, we need to grab some email header. Um, so we have uh, already grabbed some uh, email header. So let's just open it uh, with Notepad++. So we are not going to use any other um, third-party tool, um, not any other debugging software, etc. So we will simply open it in Notepad++. And if you are following the steps that uh, I am going to show you today, so you won't be able to like uh, you don't need to basically search a lot of things here and there and uh, specifically you need uh, Kali Linux uh, for some uh, debugging purpose right so let's jump in so we will open this uh, file with notepad plus plus okay okay yeah so our file is open so as you can see uh, it's a quite long header so because we are giving it a proper demo so we thought to capture one big header so that we can um, go through each and every steps and each and every single line probably which are basically required to for any incident responder to check on right so yeah so uh, this is a huge header and uh, for uh, investigation purpose what generally are um, scope is like we do not encourage for using any kind of third party tool uh, or any kind of like you can use any third party tool if you are installed in that in your machine but do not use any like online tool for passing such kind of information so if you do that probably you your org might have been hit a uh, uh, kind of phishing email or a pt kind of scenario and they are first step on their kill chain and you do not want your incident information to go out of hand right so that will be devastating um, okay so what we are going to do we will change this language to visual basic right so it's um, you can change it to any other language but i choose visual basic because of it's some colorful code and text format and it gives me proper uh, kind of syntax what actually i want to parse in through right so it's quite uh, good to start with right so okay so we will start from uh, line one as you can see uh, it's from uh, Sabir Ali so s dot Ali at the rate future pipe dot com so when you are opening any kind of email uh, this information will pop up in your email box whether you are using any kind of uh, tool like uh, Outlook or any other vendor for your emailing purpose so that information will definitely be there as you know so and uh, this information uh, it's like uh, Tuesday April so when the mail has been uh, has actually landed in your inbox or if we have uh, captured it from the uh, server itself so when it actually landed to the server next thing um, is the is the basic uh, like uh, date uh, or so okay so uh, i got a little bit uh, off road so this information uh, it's not so much of valid right so the date information what is actually there in the second line that is the actual uh, time when the email came to you so this information might be when you have taken that sample out from your server so and this is the actual uh, date and time and minus seven uh, as you can see it's the header for your time zone so if it is you are in utc it would be utc minus seven so that you can uh, convert and if you are in some different uh, 
time zone like EDT or in PST so you can convert that easily right next is MIME type so MIME type is a uh, information that you are going to see a couple of times over here in your header so if you just copy it uh, or you simply copy that MIME version and uh, you just simply search it I'll go with search right and so next uh, oops where it take where it took me okay so this line uh, MIME version yeah, as you can see this is the same thing MIME version right so yeah it is not mentioned here what is the version but it the term is mentioned here right so again if you go next okay so this is again mime version 1.0 so like that way you will see this term a couple of uh, time maybe more than couple of time in your header so basically it took me the front uh, obviously so okay so what is actually mime so if you simply like uh, google it mime version oh sorry mime version of email so probably you, you might get a rfc or kind of something so similar that kind of information what happened to my okay it worked now okay email header mile version so let's open the wikipedia okay my net is little bit slow so apology for that okay so multi-purpose internet mail extension turn internet standard that extends the format of email message supports text in character set other than ascii so there are kind of versions uh, that will be available so you can go through it uh, what is actually 1.0 and if something else is coming up right so the other symbol that is important so inside my version that is kind of thing that multi content type it's here you can see the content type is text plain so there are different type of content type so this is a information field that indicates what type of media is inside your uh, overall email so as you can see here it is multi-part mixed so that means your email has been divisioned by uh, multiple uh, paragraph as as per se or we can say the header multiple boundary per se so we'll come to this boundary but to start with so multi-part means your email is having multiple uh, part or portion and mixed means so if you see here it is tech plain right so text plain obviously you have seen this kind of information so file also have some kind of mime type so if you are uh, checking like uh, some kind of file information if it is having text dot plain that means it's in simple plain text and uh, it is multiple mix that means you are having different kind of information so let's check uh, this content type so how many content type we might have so we'll do a search again and next search next okay this one okay so we do not have anything but that's really word so it's charma okay backward direction i'll put it off okay so there is no other uh, content type but let's let's uh, start and let's see if we have any something in later point of time right so yeah so multi-part mix means your email is being divided by multiple parts and it's taking multiple mixed version of your email format it could be rtf it could be any kind of attachment or could be simple text as well okay so boundary this information specifically divides your uh, total email as per se or email header in different parts so you will see this information um, couple of time more than couple of time in your header so let's search it okay so next yeah so this is so what actually is happening so 149 line so that means if we go back into our fourth line and so that means this is the starting of our boundary and when it ending 140 okay, okay okay yeah here 149 line so here it is ending the first boundary so that means in this portion of email you have uh, your a uh, lot of information like um, your uh, DKIM signature maybe SPF records maybe your 
uh, dmark, then your originator address, x header, etc., etc. And this is the ending of your first boundary. Now, if you go, if you check here, there is another uh, MIME version. So, as we are saying, content type, right? So, content type there initially it was mentioned as a uh, mixed and uh, multi part and mixed. And now, if you go to line number 149, so that is uh, okay, one not 149, 151. That is means multi part alternative. So, that is another uh, content type, right? So, and if you see uh, this information is, uh, and here is another boundary and it's slightly different. So, what is actually saying within, within your one boundary, there has been a, another boundary. So, that's kind of looping, right? So, if you, if you are giving your text or your any other information, uh, within different kind of format so you can build your boundaries in nested format right so as you can see this format is again mentioned here so that means this format is starting here and if we search it here again what we can say okay it's ending here right so so what is actually inside that it's the body of your text so if you go back right so this is your uh, this overall information what is upward to 149 line is your first boundary inside that there is another boundary this is this one which is starting here and it is basically ending at the bottom of your email body right so as you can see it is the email body right so um, uh, this is ending here at the email so another content type is starting so we will come to that later uh, but i hope you got that point so what does this boundary mean so you can hover up and you can go down and you can see how many boundaries are there in your email right so we'll go back content type content transfer encoding so that is basically the encoding format of uh, what is the content uh, format it could be 8 bit of ascii value it could be like um, 7 bit of ascii value what we are seeing over here right so yeah again now coming to subject so i believe it's quite simple so whatever subject the email sender will mention here so that will come up in the in this portion okay so now again one from information and that is like quite identical what we have seen in uh, line one so nothing extra Two. Now, this is the information where the actual sender is sending this email. So, if you are you have received this particular email, you could be this hoagie.kim. Uh, pernot recur.com. So, if you are this person, your ID could be here also, right? So, this is the two information to which the email has been sent, right? So, message ID next. This is uh, basically a ID information what uh, generally Microsoft keep on adding to each and every email by which uh, your email server can identify your uh, email address um, or to uh, specify your email to which index value. So that is a message ID. Okay. Now, now received information so as you have seen this there are multiple received information so what so far we are doing we are traversing from top to bottom but to traverse this received information we will go from bottom to top that means we will first check the received information what is at the very bottom section and we will go up right so that is uh, because what is the reason of that we are going in a uh, reverse way because from which location your uh, email has been generated it will traverse back to that portion so suppose uh, let's say uh, there are like hops you, you you know right hop so it could be a b c d hop and you are present and d hop and your email is originating from a hop right so a b c d that means a will be your first hop uh, so b a will be your hop where the email is been originated then b your will be your second hop where the
the email has been received first right so this b hop will be your last uh, received uh, header right so if you check it and if you go back and if you traverse one two three four five six seven received uh, so ultimately when you reach here the email has been reached to your uh, email server okay so what does it say received from ip address this one then port uh, this one by server netcom experts.com with uh, uh, is uh, yes smtpa exam so that could be your um, email client right so if we just check it what is exim probably we can uh, see it let's see i am hoping that it could be your uh, email yep uh, email internet mailer how to protect cv yeah exim well so uh, exim security release direct admin forum so obviously it's a uh, email client right so so from uh, the person the uh, actually the person who has sent you the email he or she might have used this exim information 4.90 underscore one right then mm, envelope from s ali that is uh, the information from s ali it is coming from s ali uh, for hoagie.kim record.com and there's the same information what uh, we have seen in the top right so we can check on it what is this ip address let's see what is this ip address if we go back to uh, okay so uh, we can say like we can go to virus total and we can check out this what is this ip address okay okay so quick pack llc okay details okay it is in us and net range is this net name okay handle current quick packers llc so uh, could be a mail originating server so local server from which your email has been coming from right so that is the first received header now the second hop is server netcom experts.com again so first what is actually happening this guy has received your email then forwarded to this guy right so this uh, particular information over here and it is 144 login so from server.com this by mx post hosted.com so yeah so basically if you see here there would be a little delay so 19 22 like that way so and it is uh, utc minus 4 so as we have we have told earlier right so again so when this guy has received the email it forwarded to this guy uh, m and like that way it was forwarded to this guy so i believe it is uh, prn 365 so this is the information where microsoft has been interrupted or microsoft has been introduced so when microsoft smtp server received this email they forward it to this guy so i believe uh, this could be the local server of this uh, our uh, receiver so hogikimfar.riker.com this riker.com might have this um, this uh, where is it okay so this is outlook.office365.com so they might have this local uh, server information so when this server information has received it forwarded it to uh, that regional uh, server again by klprb outlook.com and finally from krb by uh, this guy so so what is basically happening from this ip address? so if you see the buy information is taking place in the from information of the top receiver header right so it is kind of like hopping information and uh, you can uh, like uh, do a search by uh, checking that ip address if anything found and uh, any if you see there is any suspicious ip address is originating between this uh, received header format like that way and you can uh, build that the time frame that how many hop 
or how many total uh, received information was there in your email header right okay so we are going to close it up so that is the reason we have converted it to a vb uh, vb script so that is the reason so we are done with this received header right so next coming is authentication so this information is very much uh, important to understand right uh, so if your organization has been uh, your email system is configured is really proper manner this authentication result gives you a lot of information in terms of whether you are going to receive that email or if you are not going to receive that email right so spf your begin your uh, dmark so lot of information are given right so okay so let's start with our spf okay so what does spf mean let's check it out spf in email okay sender policy framework is an email authentication method designed to detect forging sender addresses during the delivery email so this guy in your email header is telling that your email might have been spooked by someone else right so sender ip is this one now let's check it out what is this sender id okay then we'll go to virus total and we'll paste this okay proof point interesting so proof point is a email security vendor as per se so it's interesting right so proof point they are using the proof point sender oh okay so sender let's go sender um, ip is this smtp mail from futurepipe.com uh, record.com dekim fail uh, dmark none so it is saying signature did not verify so um, okay so this is the authentication spf record and if you see the received spf record it is saying that fail so protection.outlook.com domain of future pipe does not designate this ip as a permitted sender so that means this guy or this ip address is not authorized to send email on behalf of futurepipe.com right now how that actually takes place so let's check it out and let's check what are the spf record it might have so for that we will go to our kali linux and we will do a dig okay let's open our terminal here let's open it up okay i hope it is visible okay oh, how we can zoom in control plus okay it's not working so i need to do it like that i don't know why it is not working so men so men okay right so what we will do we will do a dig at 8.8.8 so that means we are using our google server domain uh, dns lookup and we'll do a minus t that is for type and text because we are specifying it as a text and futurepipe.com let's see oh cool so what does it say it's saying a lot of information here we will not uh, go through each and everything our interesting point is this one right so what is saying so spf version one so uh, futurepipe.com using uh, spf version one and it is saying ipv4 means uh, these ip addresses are authorized to send email on behalf of futurepipe.com so that is mentioned in futurepipe.com's spf record so what else information is there include information so that means it is again including so that is basically a macro so you uh, besides your this ip information 
you are also including these their SPF record as well. So if any of your IP address or any of uh, email originator is coming from this domain's SPF, you will uh, receive that or you will say, okay, you are authenticated to send that email to me, right? Uh, so if we go back to our header, uh, this IP, this guy 67.231, so I don't see it anywhere. Okay, so 61, not 67, right? So if we do uh, another level of dig for this little domain over here, so let's copy and let's do a paste. Okay, see what it gives me. It might take uh, some time. Oh, okay, it came up. Okay, so again, IP. Uh, so it's a cider block mentioned here again a cider block again a cider block okay so ipv6 information is also there and there is another micro right okay so what is actually it is saying uh, as you can see so this ip address is not anywhere in futurepipe.com's um, spf record or any of its macros SPF record as well. So you can check uh, or you can build a small script um, to check this in a uh, repeated manner. So recursive way, how many macros are there that can simply check out and it can simply wake up, right? So that's pretty simple. And uh, just let me tell you one thing. So here is one information that uh, dash all, right? So SPF record, if you uh, search SPF, P F R F C. Okay, so there are a couple of uh, some other uh, information, right? So uh, let's check it out. So what does it actually mean? So I know it. It's like hard fail. So minus all means if your IP address is not any of those mentioned uh, SPF record IP address, your a mail will be gonna hard fail. So the mailbox will simply say no you are not authorized right so i believe it's called delimiter I'm not sure let's check it out okay so is it in there yep oh sorry it's called qualifier so these are the qualifier that can be there in that spf record so um, as you can see all already said include it's the macro you can any you can include any of the information like that way and if you go yeah little thing down here so plus means you are passing that fail so that means you are hardly failing so that means you are telling that you cannot send the information nope there is no chance soft fail means something like that okay you are like 50 50 or you can something say okay you are not authorized to send that email but okay i am uh, letting you uh, to do that and neutral uh, i don't know what does that neutral mean and why someone will uh, give up a question mark right so pretty confusing okay so uh, do not go back there and let's come out here so that means minus all so that means you are going to hurt fail okay Okay, now uh, we'll go back to our header. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, authentication result is done. So received SPF. So again, so fail. That means your receiver side SPF is hardly failing it. So that means it's a hard fail, right? So that is it's saying future prime does not designate you as a permitted sender, right? So SPF failed. Client IP is this. Hello is, uh, I believe it's a PRN365. We have seen this PRN365 in some of our received header as well, right? So, okay, received header. Now, authentication result, uh, result original. Uh, again, this, uh, as we can see, SPF is fail. Uh, okay, so nothing new. Okay, so now coming our portion as a DKIM. So, what is DKIM. So if we go back and if we do, uh, I believe we have opened it somewhere. Okay, no. Okay. So let's check it out. What is DKIM? 
checkm wiki that's all the best information it provides checkm domain yeah domain key identified name dkim is email authentication method designated to de detect forged sender address in email email spoofing a technique often used by phishing or email spam right so yeah okay so what is his signature okay so this is his signature so first thing it is say version one then the algorithm by which your key will be generated right so what is we are saying here okay version one same thing rsa 256 q is what is q okay q means okay okay so default query method default query method okay is our dns obviously it's querying that so it's dns relaxed relax what does it mean c okay relax simple what does it say c canonical algorithm for header and body okay interesting so that means relaxed simple so um, what else so c c c we're seeing somewhere here c yeah relevant c algorithm so you can check it out here so not much of uh, more interest so you can you can read it through what does each and every single phase term terms at and articulate at okay we will uh, come down and we will see that mine version here same and this is our uh, little dkim signature so that means what it is saying that so b if we go back to b b is signature of header and body and bh means body hash so what is the uh, so basically i can say that dkim in in our ci trad so basically it's like uh, our i so integrity it's uh, telling you our your email is integrity maintained your email has been maintained your integrity or not while in the channel bypass right so from the hop a to so from this received filler right here and if you go to this receipt filler right there your email has not been tampered with right so uh, that is that is what the whole convention of dkim um, of telling you right so if you go back to your um, authentication header and if you see here SPFL somewhere we see Dikim fail, right? Yeah, here Dikim fail, right? So that means signature did not verify. So that means what signature it is talking about. So signature of header and body. So that means B. B is our last information. So this one. So that means your email might have been tampered with, not exactly the same originator who is claiming to be right so it is quite convenient to say that your spf is failed your dkim is failed and your dmark is also failed so uh, sorry it's none so basically what is uh, dmark so we can check it out what is dmark dmark Oh, oh no, not this one. Dmark in email header. Okay. Domain based message authentication reporting and conference is an email authentication protocol designated to give your domain owner to ability to protect their domain from unauthorized use commonly known as email spoofing. So every header like your SPF, your Dmark, your DKIM is telling is basically mentioning your integrity confidentiality and like so there is no availability in there so um, so they are telling you that uh, your email could be originated from a suspicious source what they are actually claiming is not that actual source right so uh, dkim is basically the algorithm by which your dmar can SPF could be merged in that fashion that okay if DMARC became fail so there is very less chance that your SPF record will pass and your DMARC will pass right so 
that's quite convenient okay okay so we'll go bottom section wow oh, okay so what next so your 60 line says reply to it's complex something middle vista by outlook.com that means it's another indication that your email has been spooked right so email is coming from salefuturepipe.com but if you are this guy hogi kim pernodricker.com you have received this email but on receiving this email you are doing a reply like reply all or reply to your reply will go to this guy right so they are using outlook.com and it's like not very hard task to spoof any of your outlook.com email right so that is happening here so it quite uh, suspicious that right so you want to reply someone in futurepipe.com and that mail is going to someone guy in outlook.com suspicious right okay now um, as I uh, told there would be number of X header mentioned here so the these header are like optional header so whenever your email is passed someone or is being checked or is being uh, going through any of your Microsoft server so they tends to add a lot of your SPF uh, record information so like uh, SPF record, then your anti abuse report, then like blah blah blah, a lot of information you will see like X header. So, those information are basically the um, optional header, uh, how you can uh, identify that. Okay, so if so, this information might come in handy when you do not have these fields, right? So, you can check it out uh, here as well. So, quite same thing. Um, Excellent right, so response. Uh, again, is a proof point SPF fail. Okay, interesting thing. So proof point SPF also got failed. So proof point is an email vendor, right? So their SPF is also failing. And by the way, so the way we have give uh, checked that in our dig in Kali uh, window, right? So it's the SPF one they are using and their IP address. So as you can see, the that little guy here what is our IP address so yeah this IP address is not here as well so quite informative right okay okay so they are scanning your email uh, as well so vendor so that means proof point virus version vendor F secure engine is 2.5 so that is basically a static engine version so they will check your email for any kind of malware or something so virus definition is quite old so probably this is 2020 so the sample that we have captured is quite old so that could be the reason it's having definition of 2018 and we, as we have seen that uh, 2018 information in in our header as well so quite convenient so nothing to be worry about okay so spoof point spam details group spam policy net spam uh, not spam blah 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 okay suspect score everything is zero but suspect score if you see it's 70 so that is another indicator your in your header that your email might have been spoofed right so yeah return path okay this is interesting so don't get confused between your reply to and return path obviously so return path is sali.futurepipe.com now this is a very uh, interesting information if you are a security guy from futurepipe.com and suppose your s.ali uh, email id has been or your uh, s.ali's uh, credential might have been compromised now this email uh, someone has pooped right so this email if not being delivered to uh, what is or to yeah this hoagie team so that email will bounce back to s ali at the rate futurepipe.com where were we uh, lost uh, yeah here we are right so that is a very good information 
if you are in cyber security team of your future pipe.com so that is an important information right so your email id might have been spooked but your ace ali is receiving lot of undelivered email so he might get freaked out i have never sent such kind of email to anyone why i am receiving so much undelivered email so that time you need to check your system and you need to um, check your logs these guys logs might the first attempt to contain the situation you get you need to reset these guys password as soon as possible you purge the email so there is a lot of triage process happens in between right so this is a very interesting information okay okay so a lot of other uh, x header information as well so we are not going to focus on those uh, well it's quite a lot okay next our interesting information might be uh, okay so the email header and our first boundary ends here so uh, i hope you have got a little bit of idea how this uh, total header like as per say before going to body what are the things that you need to check right so now second uh, boundary starts right so okay this is the second boundary as we have mentioned in the very first so encoding again it's seven bit content id is for g search okay so it this guy is starting here and this guy is telling text plain that means in in this header information nothing is uh, uh, nothing uh, no other information present apart from plain text right so obviously so uh, i believe there is no link or no something attachment is embedded within the body information so that is the reason its content type is plain text okay so the are value partner so this is the uh, email uh, body so again so while going through you can check any grammatical error or any kind of forceful information that is being addressed in the body so you are in hurry so when an attacker is emailing you and try to spoof your um, someone email address definitely he would be in a hurry so you can get some uh, information out of that as well right when replying to this request please send your reply as soon as possible but no later than seven days from today via email to mail room future fight okay this code must be included in rfc number and to be in form of either pdf or ms part file if you have any query clarification contact the undersigned okay quite interesting okay so it's uh, okay daman kasha ksa so that's in uh, uae right so interesting so they have given their telephone number as well fax information as well okay but here is a clear indication that something is wrong right so yeah okay so nothing else in this uh, in this boundary so 156 it is starting and it is ending where where it is ending it's okay there is a disclaimer as well okay okay so i believe this is the same right so 207 okay 500 let's say what is it 500 yeah so 500 so our main header is uh, main boundary is uh, 501 and this is the intermediate the nested boundary is 500 okay so here our uh, body uh, emerged right okay so next thing what is it saying content type application rtf that means it's rich text format and it is base 64 encoded so basically whatever mentioned in this format as a clear text as you can see it is a text plain and there is eight uh, like eight bit encoding nothing else but here it is base 64 encoded and it is rt average text format right so whatever mentioned from 212 till okay it's quite long okay it's ending here this little fell over here 516 line if so as you can see from the pattern of this encoding format so it's base 64 so whatever mentioned in the body format it's definitely the same format is mentioned here as well but in base 64 so if you are using any kind of tool to 
uh, decode your um, text you will see the same bloody information over here as well so i am not going to do that you can test it on your own but remember do not use any kind of online tool for doing this you can do it in house you can use any powershell script you can use your kali line so that's quite simple right so a latter part uh, i'll show you okay so intermediate header ends here so our main header again is begin here right so what it is saying now okay so content type again application octet stream interesting so that means there is an attachment in your email so name is uh, something dot xls and lzz so what does it lzz i am expecting it could be something um, some kind of zipping format or something so let's check it out what is lzz okay yep open lzz files with winzip so file format so that seems kind of uh, compression technique right so that is being used here okay content type attachment content description attachment file name is same so this code over here so again it's base 64 right so this code over here starting from 526 um to oh okay it's quite a big but it's ending okay is it ending really here at the bottom okay maybe we have uh, skipped something in between okay 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 quite a bit quite a bit it's starting five zero okay yeah here okay so here it is our again another boundary and this is our another file again lzz and this time it's a pdf file right and it's an attachment as well so there are uh, basically two attachments uh, so i zoomed out a little bit um, okay so i hope it's uh, visible okay so there are basically uh, two type of attachment present in your email um, and you can very well uh, curb your attachment uh, from this email header itself but it's very necessary to capture your email header in such a format that nothing has been tampered with so obviously you can see that right it's uh, sorry where is, where is it? yeah okay so it's uh, like uh, base 64 so if you omit one of your alphabet your you are not going to uh, curve your actual information out of it right so what actually we are gonna do here we uh, will copy this information like this whole text like base 64 and we will create two different files so for the sake of our time we have already created two file one is file bin so let's open it okay so this is the first file uh, okay i'll close it no i don't need to save and this one okay so as you can see it's starting with koi i believe it's that okay it's the koi and if you go to the very end it's ending with the uh, that's v equal symbol right so this is our first file and uh, okay so let's check it out so we'll not go through that crap any more so what we'll do we'll go to next yeah so this is our next boundary it is ending here and our new file is starting here so this is another uh, octet stream and base 64 encoded uh, file format uh, we will paste it uh, in another file so we have done that already so this is file 2.bin so let's open it okay so if you see here it's uh, Okay. this is our original file it's starting with k b c t b something and it's uh, k b c t b something right okay now we will try to curb out that um, 
this little fella from this hash, uh, hash value or from this uh, encoded stream as such okay so what we will do okay we will minimize it we will go to our Kali okay, login okay okay minimize this screen we will create a folder we'll name it as sample okay yeah, sample let's go inside sample okay and we will take these two files so first let me close these two files until otherwise i might have uh, received some error so okay i'll drag these two fellas into this on um, my virtual machine yep i have pasted it in my virtual machine right so i'll go back to my terminal okay so okay i don't need this terminal anymore i'll close it and i'll open so let me brightness a little bit i hope it's now clear so i'll open up our terminal inside this folder Okay, ls minus l. Okay, file one dot bin something one dot bin. Okay, so now remember if there is any um, file which you want to decode using uh, like base 64, so that is already a minus minus help. If you do, there is a lot already a uh, tool as such present in your uh kali linux so you just need to use to decode and you just need to parse your uh, file information that's it and you will, you will uh, decode that information uh, on behalf of you but at times it also happens that your coding is uh, not articulated properly from the header generally in base 64 it takes like uh, uh like multiple of four uh, bit of character but if that is not there your uh, this decoding will not run but uh, we are not going to uh, as such decode it and see it what is inside but uh, because already we know right uh, what information could be inside we are trying to curb that file how much we want like um, uh, possible way right okay so what uh, so it's bin uh, okay so sorry it's bin okay so uh, our main file is in lzz format now we need a way to uncompress lzz uh, right so what we are going to do here okay uh, we will see we'll control it up we'll clear it we will see sudo apt cache lz l what is that lzz lzh okay lzh lzh okay invalid operation sudo apt what is it sudo apt cache oops okay um what is it in what is it called sudo one minute okay unable to look at package lg8 okay so we need something uh, okay I don't remember what is the command. Am I doing anything wrong? Uh, okay, okay, let's close it off, close it off. Okay, open terminal. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, search L H A L H A L H A. Okay so okay so we will do a uh, two thing okay 
so sudo app cache uh, lha so that means uh, l or we can do uh, l uh, what is that what is it called l z h l z h right so it it is basically telling me what are the uh, option available in kali linux to uh, decompress or uh, basically yes decompress that so my interest is uh, this one lhasa dit archiver decomposer so if you are uh, not familiar with it or if you do not have it in your kali so you can simply just uh, okay okay here it is only right okay sudo at install what is it called uh, LHASA install LHASA okay so uh, it's already installed in uh, my Kali so I do not need to install it again so what I am going to do now I'll uh, I'll, I don't need this console I need this two files and okay so I'll do a cat mm, and then file one dot bin then I'll pass it to base 64 minus D mm okay and again i'll parse it with less let's see oh okay might be something wrong oh what did I, oh, oh i'm stupid so file one dot bin okay okay i hope i am typing the correct command yeah supposed to like that okay x60 so that is uh, because of that parsing so oh okay Yes, it's coming up, but it's saying that invalid input. So that is the reason I I told you before. So uh, there could be some scenarios that your file has not been curved properly, or your header is not curved properly from uh, your email server. So that is the reason you might have this uh, uh, tough time over here. But anyway, we are not uh, going to see it um, by decoding it. But we want to curve that file out right so okay so uh, we are here and if we do our less minus l uh, okay so what we are gonna do we are going to open it file one dot bin again we are going to parse it with base 64 minus d this time we are going to create one l what is that i tend to forget l z h l z h right so that uh, might be coming so we are ignoring that it anyway file to file to dot l z h what okay so l we do ls minus l our file is ready now what we are gonna do l h a s a what does it say x l h a s a file one dot bin not bin l c z okay yep so as you can see this uh, 
compressed file format is giving me the name of that file and its ratio is 44.8% compressed. Now what we are going to do, we are going to use that same command but we are going to extract that file. Yep. So yeah, that is the reason of failure because our base64 was not running properly so that might be the reason you have not captured your uh, header fully from your server but anyway it can give you at least some sort of uh, idea right so what could be that inside your file so again we'll do a file 2 and the same right so as you can see here it came up at one two dot exe ls minus l okay so two file little two file here now what we can do we can do a md5 sum e x and this guy and again md5 sum vh this guy okay so you can see uh, it's quite like you can see that uh, md5 sum is identical because of the reason might be they have attached the same file same information in your xls format but the way and the way we have generated it and you can simply check it file out in your virus total so do not dump that file rather uh, just upload that hash file into your um, into a virus total then it will give you the hint right so yep so where are we so uh that's basically ending here the uh if we take it out if we just take this uh example full here and our header is ending here so so that is the overall architecture of your mail sample so you can take one of your email sample you can curve out uh, the identical information you can probably use some other tools like um, uh, for curving that particular information or the hash value from your uh, header like uh, holy debug then uh, some kind of other tool as well now python script you can also use right so that's a quite interesting uh, thing rather uh, going to your uh, any online tool and upload it there so it's very much important you do it everything in-house hope this session has been informative to you and by now you can do all the magic by your own and don't need to dump your data outside which might lead serious issue down the line if you like the content please give us a thumbs up and any query can go to the comment section down below. Stay tuned via subscribing our channel so that you don't miss any of our new topics from us. Thanks for watching.